So good morning, everybody. I'm happy to see everybody here again. This is our 24th week of staying at home. Can you believe it? Six months, 24th week. Literally, we've been at home for half a year. Last week, we talked about being serious or being faithful in the place that God has placed us. As a student, we should be serious like the 12-year-old Jesus who was focused on learning and who was focused on the scripture. We need to understand and experience our role as a child of God. We also need to experience God through prayer, through Bible reading, and through having a relationship with Jesus. Today, I want to talk about being thankful. Yes, I've talked about this before. We've discussed this before, but I think we need to be reminded that we should be thankful every so often. This is a topic which will reoccur many, many times throughout our lives. The problem is that human beings tend to forget about th being thankful when things are going very well. As things are going well, we often forget that there is a God who is watching over us and taking care of us and keeping all those inconveniences and keeping difficulties out of our lives. So when we have a small hiccup in our lives, sometimes we get all bent out of shape. We start to complain and we wonder why are all these things happening to us, but we are forgetting that we should be thankful during the times when things are going well. So who can we look at in the Bible to see how he was thankful in his life? Let's start with Jesus and see how he raised Lazarus from the dead in chapter 11, uh, John chapter 11. Who was Lazarus? We learn from the beginning of chapter 11 that he was the brother of Martha and Mary. This is the Mary who poured perfume on the feet of Jesus and wiped it with her hair. We read that one day Lazarus died. He was sick and unfortunately he passed away. We also know that Jesus went to see him and raised him from the dead. This is a story that we know very well. Many of you have learned this in children's ministry. But what is important for us today is to see the attitude of Jesus that he had before he raised Lazarus from the dead. John chapter 11, verse 41 to 42. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. In verse 41, we see that uh, Jesus thanked the Father, thanked him for hearing him. Would you have ever imagined that Jesus giving thanks to the Father? He is the Son of God. He knows that God hears, hears him. But we see here that Jesus was humble. He was grateful. He thanked God the Father for hearing him. And he knew that, he said it outright here, that he knew that the God the Father always hears him. So he did not take God for granted. He did not take God the Father uh, for granted that he will always be there to be with him. We can see that Jesus has a thankful attitude, okay? So isn't this amazing? Here is Jesus, the Son of God in the flesh, who thanks God the Father for being there. We know that Jesus often spent time in prayer. This was something that he did quite often. It was something that he worked at. He worked to build a relationship with God. He works at the relationship, and he succeeds in the relationship, but he does not take that relationship for granted. So unfortunately, we sometimes see God as a genie or a wishing well. We know that he is there and we know that he is available to us, but we only remember to approach him when things are going not well or when things are going bad. Perhaps we ask, why do we have X, Y, Z amount of work to do? Well, students in other school districts don't seem to have that much work. Perhaps we wonder why we are stuck at home right now in the warm weather. Like I said earlier, it's going to be 100 degrees during the middle of the week. Why are we going through these things right now? Unless we look at how people in different parts of the world are doing, we often forget that we have it very comfortable here right now. We have it very good here right now. On Friday night, I shared with you the pictures of the fires that are happening throughout California. Uh, many of the pictures are very stunning, but at the same time, they're very sad because we know that many people have lost their places to live. Many people have lost their possessions. And if they're farmers or they're working in, on farms, they've lost many of their animals. However, 
there are other situations which you may not be aware of. These are pictures of the Yangtze River in China. They've had a lot of rain this year, lots and lots of rain, and their dams are in danger of overflowing. So many of their cities and their countrysides, they're completely flooded. You can see that there's a satellite picture of on the left side in the middle and the, where the river was low. But on the right side, the Brown River, you can see there's a lot of soot in there and the water has risen and it's a lot bigger than the picture on the left. So what's the point? The point is that we have it really good here right now, whether you know it or not. So let's be appreciative. Let's be grateful that in our current circumstances, uh, we are not in danger of facing anything. So can we be thankful that we also had an uneventful summer? This summer, as far as I know, all of you were doing well. All of you, well, not doing well, but you guys were fine. You guys didn't get sick. You guys had food. You guys had a dwelling. You, everything was okay. I was not aware of you. any of you getting seriously sick or any of you who are watching live right now who were in trouble. So we should also be thankful that or we can also be thankful that how our dwellings, our houses were not uh, destroyed or damaged in any of the protests or the demonstrations. Uh, but can you be thankful that school is finally starting and now you will have something constructive to do? For some of you, you may have a love and hate relationship with school. Without school, you find yourself being too bored. But with school, you find yourself having too much work and the work may be challenging, or it just may be uh, cumbersome to do because it, it requires a lot of steps and there are a lot of things to do. But I urge you, regardless of what situation you're in, to have a thankful heart. On this Sunday, before the rest of you return to school, let's take a look at Jesus during the Last Supper. How is this relevant to us? I mean, Jesus having the Last Supper with his disciples, but just like how you guys are starting school tomorrow, this is Jesus' last opportunity to be with his disciples in a friendly way, in a way where everybody is still cordial and kind and courteous, because Jesus already knew that G Judas was going to betray him uh, very soon. Yet, during the dinner, how did Jesus pray uh, during the Last Supper? In Luke chapter 22, verse 15 to 19, he says this, And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the cup of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do it in remembrance of me. Jesus gave thanks for the opportunity to be with his disciples, to eat and drink, and to start a new covenant. Jesus did not say, okay, I'm God. I'm about to go save you. I'm about to save all of mankind. He was not prideful, right? He was very humble. He gave thanks for the things that he was about to do. And he knew that he, from verse 15, we can see that he knew that he was about to go suffer a great deal. He knew what was coming up ahead of him, but he still gave thanks for his disciples. He gave thanks for the bread. He gave thanks for the wine. He knew that he will not have a chance to be with his disciples later on. So he was thankful for that opportunity to be with him. He was looking forward to this Passover dinner with them. So we can see that he gave thanks twice. Okay, so in the same way, can we be like Jesus to be thankful for everything, for our circumstances, all right? So before the harshest conditions that he will face, Jesus maintained an attitude of gratitude and was thankful for what he had. So in the same way, how can we maintain or have a thankful heart? Can we be like Jesus to be thankful before the storm comes upon us, right? Before the... Uh, big trouble that we know is coming before those things come that we can be thankful. Remember, Jesus came to earth as a model for how we should live. In the same way he was empowered by the Holy Spirit, we also have the Holy Spirit in us. 
we have the Holy Spirit to help us and to guide us. Are we willing to let the Holy Spirit help us so that to keep us level-headed, to keep us focused on Jesus so that we will not panic, we will not worry about what will happen to us. In this hot weather right now, tempers might flare or we might be in foul moods, right? I know it's hot, we can't think clearly. Sometimes we say things we don't really mean. We do things we don't really want to do, but we're just too tired or too hot to uh, do otherwise. But if we don't have air conditioning, can we still give thanks for the fans that we have to keep us cooler? Can we think about the firefighters who are out there fighting fires, right? Uh, they are in this humid weather, they are in all their gear with no fans or air conditioning. But we gotta remember from last week, these firefighters are intent on doing their job. This is what I talked about last week. They know that they are supposed to be fighting fires and they are focused on doing that because that's the place where they are at this moment. Those of you who have started school and have received your assignments, can you be grateful that you finally have something constructive to do? Yes, there are other things that you can do, but without a constructive environment, it is usually difficult to get better at something, right? We need to practice. You need to practice doing something constructive. Those of you who are learning an instrument, you practice every day so that you can become better. Those of you who are good at drawing, you practice every day or every so often so that you can become better. During the summer, I took it upon myself to also learn a new programming language. You know that my other job or my other, the other thing that I do is a programmer and I program. Uh, but it is not easy to learn a new language, right? A spoken language, it is also difficult to learn. Unless you practice, unless you spend time with it, you're, it's hard to retain any of that. So to learn a new language, firstly, you must have someone or something to practice on or with. And secondly, if you don't keep practicing, you're gonna forget everything. So I periodically make sure that I spend a few hours every week to continue to practice so that I can be better at this new programming language. On Friday night, many of you were surprised to hear that when I think of writing a paper, I start at 10 to 15 pages, right? This is the minimum number of pages that I need to write. And this is where I start. It's not a big deal, but I remember when I first went back to school, the thought of writing 10 pages, 15 pages for a paper was pretty daunting. But with every paper that I write, I give thanks to God and I give him all the glory for helping me to finish. So let us be grateful for everything which takes time to learn and to accomplish. Let's be thankful that God has given us perseverance, God has given us the, the, the know-how the strength and the wisdom and the perseverance to keep going to finish. Lastly, when things do not go our way, can we also ask God to give us a thankful heart? From Friday night, we read in our Friday devotion that Paul was often ridiculed. He was often made fun of. And, but when was Paul ridiculed? In Acts 26, we find that Paul was giving his testimony before the Roman emperor Festus. Paul was in a situation because Festus' predecessor unfairly locked Paul up. As Paul talks about how God has helped him every single day and how Jesus Christ, the Messiah, suffered and rose from the dead, King Festus interrupted him and said, Paul, you are out of your mind. You've been learning too much and you are just, you've gone crazy. You've gone nutso, right? So Paul was made fun of by other people. But Paul knew that he was filled with joy from the Lord, and he gave thanks in all circumstances. This is why in Colossians 3.15, he wrote that, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Paul knew that no matter what circumstances he was in, God was going to be with him. So he knew that regardless of whether things went well, regardless of whether he was beaten, regardless of whether people made fun of him, regardless of whether people did not accept what he had to say, Paul maintained a thankful attitude. So can we also be thankful because God promises to be with us in all circumstances, in all situations? 
some of your schools uh, or your school districts have provided you with additional computing hardware so you can do uh, get online and attend your classes. They have given you different hardware, computers. Uh, some of your school districts might have provided you with iPads. I don't know, but I do know that your school districts have provided you with different things. Can you be thankful for having those things? As we are blessed enough to experience the peace of God, can we also remember to always have a thankful heart? Before you eat your meals, be thankful that you have your meals, you have something to eat. Before you start doing your homework, be thankful that you have something constructive to do and how everything you learned right now will help you in the future. Yes, everything you are learning right now, believe it or not, will help you in the future, including chemistry, including physics, including English, including math, including Spanish or a foreign language, Every single one of these classes will help you in the future. Every single one, believe me. Uh, some of you also had a chance to visit new places this summer, right? I know some of you didn't go out very much, but some of you had the opportunity to go out and visit different places. I think right now, if you don't appreciate it, you will appreciate it come winter when it's raining and you're stuck at home. You will go, oh yeah, I remember during the summer, I had the opportunity, I had the chance to go to different places, to go see new things I haven't seen before. So in every situation, let's give thanks for what we have. Even when things don't go well, let's be thankful that we have the opportunity to experience God's blessings. So as a child of God, be thankful for all of his provisions. Be thankful for everything that he provides for you. Every evening, Thank God for taking care of you during that day, right? Be thankful that um, you made it to the end of the day. But in the morning, greet God and thank him and greet him. Say, good morning, God. Good morning, Jesus. Here I am again. Spend time to read God's words and to think about them and to contemplate them. When God makes a promise to you in the Bible, when in his words, when he says, I promise something, take his word for it, you know, be thankful that he is there, uh, that he makes these promises and he will follow through with his promises. If you look at the Old Testament, he made many, many, many promises to his people and he followed through with every single one of those. If the people had uh, difficult situations, if the people were conquered by other nations, it was because they forsook God. They decided they no longer need God and they will uh, go through life themselves. All right. In the same way, we have Jesus right now. Jesus died for us on the cross, and he sent the Holy Spirit to help us to, to go through life. So let us remember that how good God has been to us. And go back and read the Bible and see what promises he makes to us, because he will follow through with those promises, and we can be thankful for those promises. Let's every day set our heart on Jesus so that we can get through our day as we begin the new school year, you and, and I included, I start school also tomorrow. Let's give thanks that we have schooling, that we have warm weather, that we are still safe, that we can count our blessings. Everything that we have right now is a blessing, believe it or not. Be thankful for it. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, we realize that we are, you know, all of us here who are watching live online right now, we're so thankful to you that you have taken care of us. We thank you for being with us, um, helping us. And if there's anybody here who is watching online later on, uh, whatever circumstances that they are in, we pray that you be with them. We pray that you help us to be thankful in all circumstances. It is sometimes very difficult. Our body, our flesh uh, is uncomfortable in many situations. And we can get upset at other people. We might get upset at our teachers. We might get upset at our friends. But let's be thankful for the people that you have put around us, who have put in our lives to be with us uh, for, for good and for teaching us different things. Perhaps the people you have placed around us, the people are not kind to us, but you might have placed them there so that we can turn back to you, so that we can uh, return to you and seek after you. So Father God, 
help us to give thanks for every situation, for everybody, for every person. Help us to be joyful in all circumstances. Help us to be like Jesus, to trust in you, to follow you, and to uh, trust in the Holy Spirit and be thankful. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.